If you're a company who's reporting your carbon footprint or you're thinking about calculating your carbon footprint for the first time in 2012, there's definitely some new information you should be aware of. In late 2011, the Greenhouse Gas Protocol and WRI came together and published the final version of the Scope 3 product uh, carbon emissions guide. Uh, what that means is that there is now a new standard for what to calculate and how to calculate it for a wide variety of different options. So just to quickly recap, there's three kinds of carbon emissions out there. Uh, the first one is scope one. These are your direct emissions. If you are burning natural gas, if you are uh, operating any kind of uh, power generation um, or any sort of um, company vehicles, these are direct emissions from facilities or uh, things like cars or trucks or airplanes that are directly owned or controlled by your organization. Scope two are indirect emissions. This is the generally the electricity or steam, heating and cooling that you have purchased from the grid. So these are indirect emissions, generally your electricity bill. Now, scope three have always been a bit of a conundrum. Uh, the reality is, is they make up the bulk of most companies' carbon footprints. Uh, but because they were so difficult to capture and to track accurately, there really haven't been any good guidance out there. Well, that's all changed now uh, with the new scope three guidance on how to calculate your indirect carbon footprint. Um, so there's 15 categories, which makes it a little bit tough here. Um, here they are. Um, so how many of these 15 different categories do you need to track? Well, the important thing to understand is that uh, they're divided into two different categories. One is upstream, so what happens before uh, the impact is actually within your operations. And then downstream, what happens after your work in your facilities is done with the product or service that you deliver. And depending on your industry or your type of organization, the type of uh, emissions that you will need to calculate will be different. Now, the reality is, is that you could, with enough time, money, manpower, uh, you could go through it and calculate all 15 of these. However, is that really responsible? Is that a good use of your time uh, and effort? Probably not. You probably want to focus on just the biggest ones or the ones that are going to be the most material to you. So let's look at a couple of examples. So if you are uh, a manufacturing or a distribution firm, the reality is, is that there's probably five or six key scope three categories that you need to be tackling. Purchased goods and services. If you are um, purchasing any pre-made uh, or um, parts to whatever it is you make, um, purchased goods and services are going to be something you want to look at definitely. Upstream transportation and distribution, how does your stuff, your raw materials, your partially assembled things, or if you're a distributor, how does the product that you're distributing get to you? Um, where does it come from? How many different st stages does it go through by the time it actually lands in your warehouse? Definitely an area to focus on. Then we have waste generated in operations. Now, I find that waste is actually higher in manufacturing and distribution, even if you're just running a warehouse. Um, the amount of waste that you generate from packaging materials alone can be quite significant. And then you're downstream. So after the product or service leaves your hands, you want to also be, again, thinking about that transportation and distribution. How is your product getting into either the, um, the distribution center or onto the retail shelves? And you also want to be considering the use of sold products. So especially if you are selling something that requires energy or additional materials to operate. So for example, dishwashing soap or a car or a vehicle, uh, the chances are that there's going to be quite a significant percentage of the overall impact of your product or service will in fact be in uh, the consumer use or the, the use phase when people are actively using your product. So those are some of the key ones if you're a manufacturing or distribution firm. If you're an office or a service-based organization, you again want to be looking at purchase goods and services. This may actually come down to uh, office furniture, paper, computers. Um, look at the things that you purchase the most of, either in terms of quantity or, or by price. Business travel and employee commuting are also two really big ones that end up taking a much more significant percentage of your carbon footprint pie, if you will, uh, for office and service-based organizations. So especially if you have a sales force that's out there uh, promoting your service, certainly as a consulting firm, uh, business travel is our number one by far. It's about 85% of our overall carbon footprint. So don't neglect that one. 
And then if you are retail or hospitality, again, you want to be looking at purchased goods and services, the things that you bring in uh, that are either available for sale or available by use by your employees. Uh, you also want to be thinking about fuel and energy related activities. So these would be things like uh, the uh, the energy or the fuel that people need to uh, expend to get to your ski resort. Um, this would be something that, while it's not directly your impact, you don't have control over it, it is part of your overall operations. Uh, you may also want to be looking at waste generated in operations simply because in retail and hospitality, uh, typically you're seeing a, a, a pretty waste intensive um, process and, and, and operation there. You may also want to look at franchises. If you are in a retail or hospitality model that has franchises, this is where your franchise activity comes into play. You may not have direct control over those operations, but you do have indirect control and influence. And so if you do have franchises, this is where that carbon footprint impact gets gets categorized. So hope that was helpful. A quick snapshot of scope three emissions and where they fit into your overall carbon footprint. Uh, if you'd like some help with your carbon footprint, you can contact us at sustainabilityconsulting.com. We do it for a lot of different clients and can help you figure out which of these categories that makes the most sense and how can we collect it in the most efficient, uh, productive manner. And what do you do with the results once you've got them? So we hope to hear from you soon. Thanks.